F1 H2 O World Championship kicked off the 2016 season in the United Arab Emirates as Dubai hosted its maiden Grand Prix in 33 years of F1 H2 O racing. Dubai's iconic towering skyline provides the perfect backdrop for powerboat racing. This is a truly futuristic city with state-of-the-art buildings boasting the world's tallest structure, the Burj Khalifa, and the world's only seven-star hotel, the Burj Al Arab. The city's ever-expanding transportation infrastructure and architecture is a shining testament to a vision of the future. It's a cosmopolitan city with people from literally all over the globe living and working in this Middle Eastern metropolis. This is where the world comes to work, trade, negotiate, and of course, play. Dubai has an intimate connection with the sea, having been a sea trading hub through its history, a maritime legacy that is in full evidence at the annual Dubai International Boat Show, one of the most prestigious in the world. It's no wonder that Dubai is one of the world's powerboat racing capitals, with four out of the nine teams competing in the Grand Prix of Dubai based in the UAE. The locals love their powerboating, with Dubai having produced countless champions, past and present, in different racing series over the decades. Fans and visitors got a taste of an F1 H2O boat in the two-seater version, pulling up to 3Gs on turns. from nine teams and 11 countries competing at the first ever Grand Prix of Dubai. All eyes were on the world famous home team, Victory, who have ambitiously set their sights on a world title this year, and they have the man to do it, Sean Torrente. He's been on the year end podium three years in a row, and he's still looking for that elusive first world title. Last year was one of the most turbulent years of my career. Went from highs of winning, lows of losing my team, and the high of creating a new one. Now we've got all of our team together. We're solid and we're ready to take on the world this year and get rid of that third place and replace it with a world championship. With the might of the victory team behind him, this could be his year. Torrente is again joined by Nader Ben Hendy, who wants to leave the adjustment phase behind him and start racing for the prize in F1 H2O. The man to beat is, of course, late bloomer Philip Schiap. The newly crowned 2015 world champion hangs on to the prestigious number one plate for 2016, and he wants to kick his title defense off with a win in Dubai in his quest for a third consecutive world title. Uh, for me, uh, it's my begin. It's my dream to win in uh, Charger in Abu Dhabi, and now it's down. And uh, for the first race in Dubai this year, I hope the same. Joining him once again in CTIC F1 China team is the ever-improving Zhang Ziwei, who's in his fifth season on the tour. Three-time world champion Alex Carella of Team Abu Dhabi has been world runner-up two years in a row now to Xiap, and he wants to throw the monkey off his back and beat the Frenchman this year. Tani Al Kamzi, the veteran Emirati ace, will be looking to continue his excellent form from last year in 2016. And it's almost a hometown race here for the Abu Dhabi native. I'm uh, very happy to be here in my country in Dubai and uh, first time racing. Uh... <laughs> for every team here, good place, good location, 
and we will uh, do very nicely. In UAE-based EMIC team, Marit Stromoy is starting on a high as she made history in the last race of 2015 in Sharjah, winning her first race in F1 to become the first ever female Grand Prix champion. You can't take away a win, it's there forever, it's in the books. So, uh, no, for me, for me, it made me definitely more confident. Uh, now I know it's possible and the, the people around me know it's possible, so the, I always go and try my best. And, the good thing about winning is that, you know, it's possible. She's joined by young German Mike Shimura, a multiple F4S champion who's making the daunting leap to F1 H2O this year. Eric Stark of Emirates team, the rising star on the F1 H2O circuit, came tantalizingly close to a win in the last race and has multiple podiums and a pole position in 2015. You know, Sweden has never won the World Championship in Formula 1, so this year I, w I will definitely step it up and try to win a few races and, of course, try to win the championship. He leads the team alongside another former Grand Prix champion, the talented Ivan Brigada, formerly of Caudwell Racing. Baba Racing Team is headed by two-time world champion Sammy Celio, who wants to put a disappointing 2015 behind him and start afresh in Dubai alongside his fellow Finn, the up-and-coming Philip Roms. Team Sweden has four-time Grand Prix winner Jonas Andersson, once again leading the charge, joined by the ever-improving Jesper Force. F1 GC Atlantic team is headed by veteran Portuguese driver Duarte Benevente, who welcomes to the team Christophe Larigo of France. And then of course there's Blaze Performance Team, headed by one of the most successful F1 H2O drivers on the tour, 12-time Grand Prix champion and former world runner-up Francesco Cantando. His teammate is Polish ace Bartek Marsalek. Buckle your belts, it's gonna be one hell of a ride. The 1,964 meter Dubai circuit features five buoys, four red left-handers and one yellow right-hander, with a long and exciting 800 meter straightaway just off the shore at Le Meridien Minasiahi Beach Resort in the shadow of the iconic Palm Jumeirah. Yeah, we have one very long straight in this course and then it's a little bit tricky part here to coming here for the close to timing, the, the, the last turns of the race course. So uh, it's, it's very narrow there, lot of short straights, you need to have good balance on the boat there. You really don't know how rough it will be there when the, there's a lot of boats out there. No, it's a, it's a, it's a course you really need to think and, and choose the line because if you, if you mess up two, three uh, turns before the yellow, you mess up also the yellow and your time will not be good. So you sometimes you just hammer it in into every corner, but here you really, really need to think before you do it. So I like it, it's good. The BRM qualifying determines the starting lineup and is spread over three sessions, with the final six boats battling it out for the coveted pole position in the third and final session. On a day with heavy winds from the east which made controlling the boat extra tricky, 17 drivers went out on the circuit for BRM qualifying session one with EMIC's Mike Shimura unable to start. Last year's up-and-coming youngsters Jesper Fors of Team Sweden and Baba Racing's Philip Roms were both unable to handle the conditions out in Q1, joined by Nader Ben Hendy and Christoph Larigo. Bartek Marsalek put in more laps than any other driver, 22 in all, but he was bumped out by Ivan Brigada and Zhang Ziwei, who moved on to Q2. In BRM qualifying session two, Sammy Celio, the winner of a record 23 pole positions, was unable to continue after just seven laps. The big surprise was Zhang Ziwei, who was handling the conditions brilliantly, looking at a first ever Q3 spot, with Sean Torrente trying lap after lap to find... <laughs> the speed he needed for a top six finish. 
It literally went down to the last lap, and Torrente did it. Tough luck for Zhang Ziwei, but a seventh starting position is not too shabby for the young CTIC driver. Yeah, it was quite close to the, my first uh, Q3. Well, whatever, next race, we will push harder. Duarte Benevente, Francesco Cantando, Moritz Stromoy, and Ivan Brigada also all missed out on a place in Q3. BRM qualifying session three. The final six boats with a course to themselves and two laps apiece to set their fastest times in the shootout for pole. Eric Stark of Emirates team, who won his first ever pole position for the last race in Sharjah, was first out on the course, setting a fastest time of 41.94 seconds to open the session. Stark was followed by Tani Al Kamzi, but the Team Abu Dhabi veteran only managed a 42.17 lap. Team Sweden's Jonas Andersson, a two-time pole position winner, was out next, and he continued his incredible pace of late to post an intimidating 41.78 second lap, which earned him provisional pole. Sean Torrente, who just managed to make the Q3 cut, went out with a big task on his hands, but it wasn't enough on the day, settling for a disappointing 42.06 lap time. What's your position right now? Right now I'm first, but there's two more boats to go. Next out was Alex Corella, who went out looking for his 12th career pole position. The three-time world champion was in fine form, 41.61, Corella took provisional pole from Anderson and threw down the gauntlet for the final driver, Philip Schiap. The CTIC China team champion and his Raptor boat have been the ones to beat in qualifying. But Schiap was unable to beat Corella's time in his first lap. It was down to the final lap. Would the Frenchman do it? He was once again incredibly fast and incredibly tight. 41.36, Philip Schiap wins the BRM qualifying pole position, his first ever qualifying win. The final BRM qualifying session results, Schiap on pole ahead of Corella, Anderson starts in third, followed by fellow Swedes Stark in fourth, then Torrente and Al Kamzi, with Jung Zi Wei in seventh, ahead of Murat Stromoy. <laughs> Team China, congratulations. We are happy, we are strong this year, sure. And uh, for restart, uh, the season is, is wonderful. And in Dubai, the first race in UA, for me, it's a dream. As the sun goes down, the night lights up in Dubai with a spectacular water fountain show below the Burj Al Khalifa. Teams and pilots also relax and unwind at a sumptuous gala dinner that showcases Dubai's legendary hospitality. Thousands gathered along the inner city lagoon in New Dubai for the first Grand Prix of the season. With four Emirates-based teams competing, local interest was peaked. Would Sammy Celio get back to his winning ways? Could the famed Dubai Outfit victory team start the year off with a win? Could Marit Stromoy follow up her maiden win in Sharjah with another in Dubai? And would Team Abu Dhabi and Corella find a way to beat Shia? <laughs> the starting lineup, Shia with pole position, Corella starting next to him in second, Torrente down in fifth, Zhang Ziwei in seventh, Cantando at the back. Oh. 
of the field in 16th. Uh, starting fourth is going to be really interesting because uh, like my best friends here, are one is on one side and one is on the other side. So really, it will really be fun up there with Jonas and Sean. So. For sure we're going to push for maximum like always. It's a very long start straight so it's going to be interesting. And uh... Right when those lights start going out, all you're saying is please fire, please fire, please fire, please fire. Because you know if it starts good, you're good. If it don't start good, it's going to be a long race. Just moments to go, Celio is having engine problems and is unable to start the race. The final few seconds to the race, teams await the final countdown to the start of the 33rd F1H2O season. The first race of the year is on. Philip Schiap charges out of the start pontoon, leading right from the get-go. Cantando is just to the right of Duarte Benevente, trying to keep up with the Portuguese driver as Jesper Forrest comes up on Benevente's port side. No surprises as Schiap gets to the commitment buoy first, followed by Alex Carella, Jonas Anderson, Eric Stark, Torrente in fifth, and Taniel Kamzi cutting through on the inside, closing a lot of ground with the top boats. Schiap leads as Carella, Anderson, Stark, and Alkamzi battle it out with Torrente right behind them. Daniel Kamzi locking horns with Eric Stark, the Emirati managing to pass the young Swede. Further back, Francesco Cantando giving chase on the outside to Benevente and Jesper Force, cutting it close to the outside markers. Chiap has already opened a sizable lead. Corella trying to keep pace with the Frenchman, with Anderson in third, followed by a three-way battle for fourth between Alcamzi, Stark, and Torrente. Alcamzi opens his lead over Stark. Further back in the field, Philip Roms in 11th position is chased by Nader Benhendi, Jesper Fors, Benevente, and Christophe Larigo. Benevente is rising up the field, passing Nader Benhendi, and having already cast aside Jesper Force and his teammate Larigo. Up in the lead, Schiap looking very cozy indeed, with a nice big gap over Corella, the two of them having won the last five consecutive world championships. Back in the middle of the field, Stromoy in seventh, followed by former Grand Prix winner Ivan Brigada, Zhong Ziwei in ninth, Bartek Marsalek in tenth. Sean Torrente, who started fifth, Trying to claw his way up on Alcamzi, the American racing in his brand new victory built boat for the first time. The three time consecutive world champion Alex Corella has been bested by only one man for the last two years, Schiap. The Frenchman has become one of only four drivers in history to have won back to back titles, and he wants to equal Corella's tally this year. Behind them, Torrente closing in on Alcamzi, followed by Stark. Murat Stromoy, who is in seventh position, comes to a screeching halt. She was hoping to follow up her victory in Sharjah with a good start to 2016, but it was not to be. Something with the engine. Uh, I think I seized the engine, but uh, we had trouble with the trim as well, which happened uh, before. But As Shiap opens a 10 second lead over Corella, he laps his teammates Young Ziwei, who's so far looking very consistent in eighth position behind Ivan Brigada. Problems for Tani Alkamzi. The Emirati was in fourth position, but his race comes to a disappointing end. Stromoy's EMIC teammate Mike Simura just getting a feel for F1 racing in his first ever race outing letting Eric Stark pass by as a Swede laps the German. Stark's teammate Brigada enjoying his return to top flight racing with Emirates team. He wants to repeat his Grand Prix win back in 2006 when he finished world number four. But Brigada has to up his game if he's to fend off an aggressive Xiong Ziwei who's racing like a seasoned veteran out there. Sean Torrente, who moved up to fourth with Alcamzi's exit, is pressing hard on third place, Jonas Anderson. Torrente nearly has... Oh. ...as 
as he bites at Anderson's heels, but the four-time Grand Prix champion guards his position. When his boat's in good tick, Anderson has proven to be one of the fastest and best drivers on the tour. But he's going to have to work hard to keep Torrente off his tail. The American ace is gunning it around that circuit, trying to find any way possible around the Swede. Just before it goes over, Anderson's teammate loses control. His race is over, and that will be a yellow flag. The Osprey rescue team is quickly on the scene. Force is unhurt. Here it is from his onboard. The young accident-prone Swede does a full 360 somersault. Here it is from another angle. At these speeds, it just takes a tiny mistake to send a boat airborne. The yellow flag makes things interesting now as everybody's lead is cut down. Can Corella take advantage and pass Shiap on the green flag? But Shiap is sharp. He does not get caught snoozing. But behind them, Torrente has used the restart to full advantage as he moves past Anderson on the outside. Torrente moves into third. Anderson bumped down and Zhang Ziwei has also moved up into sixth behind Stark. There's an outside tussle between Christoph Larigo and Nader Ben Hendy. Ivan Brigada gets the better of Philip Roms. The restart has really shaken things up in the race. Anderson in fourth, trying to claw his way back up in pursuit of Torrente. The Swede refuses to give up. Both those drivers known for their all or nothing racing style. The positions, Shiap rebuilds a slim three second lead over Corella. Stark in fifth, and Zhang Ziwei is having his best ever race in sixth position. Benevente is seventh, Brigada eighth ahead of Roms, with Cantando back in tenth. Look at that, Zhang Ziwei setting his sights now on Eric Stark, aiming for the top five. This is the kind of racing we've been hoping to see from the young CTIC driver. With just 10 laps left in the race, Schiap is unable to rebuild that 10 second lead over Corella. The Italian is pressing hard on Schiap, looking for a last gasp effort to see if he can't break the Frenchman's race long dominance. Nader Benhendi is on track for another points finish if he can end in the top 10. He lets his teammate Torrente pass by. Bad luck for Eric Stark, a cruel blow so late in the race. Uh, first uh, launch one of the pickers, so it was difficult to turn, but then now uh, something with the engine, I lo just lost uh, like power. 5,000 was maximum RPM, so shit race. Going into the final lap, Stark's exit has moved Zhang Ziwei into the top five. Up in the lead, Shiap staves off a feisty Corella, trying to hold on for just one more lap, but Corella is just a few boat lengths behind him. The traffic is tight. Shiap does it. The Frenchman begins his 2016 campaign with a win. Shiap dominated from start to finish, but in the end, only won by less than two seconds. A best ever result for Zhang Ziwei. What a race overall for CTIC China. Benevente will be happy with a solid sixth place. Great return from Brigada in his first race back. Marsalek puts some points on the board for Blaze. Mike Simura with 13th place in his first ever Grand Prix. Not too shabby. Yeah, baby. Shiap kicks his title defense off just the way he would like it at the top of the driver's standings with the usual suspects, Corella and Torrente, in second and third. Second, we take point for the championship is important now at the start of the season. But we still have to work uh, really a lot to, to get uh, in front of, uh, of Philippe, is really fast. Let's try and work for the next race now. Team China! Hard, man. 
I'm, I'm really proud of my third place. We had about a fifth or sixth place boat on speed, and we just kept fighting. And, and uh, now we'll go back to victory, and we'll do more work, and we'll get ready for France. But great points. So it's not easy race in, uh, in Dubai. Uh, the condition is not, not easy, and uh, it's very difficult to overtake the slow boat. And uh, you do make insurance before for not destroy all the race. And um, okay, we are strong this year, and uh, now we have uh, three months for prepare the home Grand Prix, and we can do make a good season, sure. That wraps up the first ever Grand Prix of Dubai as the flag is passed on to Evian France, which will host round two. See you then.